Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Meet the Experts. This is my, my old buddy, Zane Winslade from New Zealand. And Zane and I met in graduate school for our sports psychology degrees um, and have stayed connected through the years. Uh, and I wanted to bring him on because he's produced this really cool journal in this era of high tech everything. Uh, Zane has tacked in the other direction and put something together, an actual book, even though we're gonna look at it digitally today. Um, but first, there it is, there it is. Remember those? Nice, <laughs> nice. Um, Zane, give us just a quick little background though of how, how you, uh, you, your experience in sport and you know, how you kind of decided to go the pro professional route of being in this sports psychology field. Sure, I'll give you the brief. I've got a longer uh, version, but I'll give you the shorter one. <laughs> but I was, uh, I was a professional rugby player. So I um, uh, played in New Zealand and, and various different countries overseas, Romania, the UK, that sort of thing. And um, it was always an interest. So I was always interested in how I could improve my mind. Um, always felt like it wasn't an area that was really talked about within rugby. So that, that made me more interested. And uh, when and you know, I did my own research and, and um, eventually decided that I should probably do this properly. And so did the, the qualification at JFKU and uh, with, with yourself, Damon, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, many others. And we, um, yeah, that's how I ended up in this field and um, obviously continue to learn and, and grow my own sort of philosophies and, and uh, practice, yeah. I love it. Yeah. And, you know, you and I have obviously have uh, like minds when we think about how to uh, approach sports psychology and mental training, especially with the youth. And, you know, I love how we really bonded over values being and, and just the, the, the act principles of accept, acceptance, commitment, therapy or theory. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing you have some of those principles sprinkled in here. Um, would you mind taking us just on a little jaunt with yeah, yeah. this journal and give us a sense of what's in here and, and why you think it's so impactful? Yeah. So I guess the story behind it, I'll start with that, is that I was delivering sort of resilience um, sports psychology programs for, for kids aged between you know, 10 and um, 18. Um, did a, around 30 of those group group courses that were four, late, four weeks long and was always getting uh, questions about resources, things, other things that they could do. And um, so I put together this journal. Um, and then as a like pretty much a, a sort of summary of what I was doing on these programs and what I'd figured out was, was needed and what connected with people and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I guess it would be largely act-based, um, value-based in its approach. Um, and that sort of remains a core part of my like philosophy. So yeah, the values part is critical for this age group because what I always say to the to the teenagers that I that I do a lot of work with is that they they're at a point in their lives now where they're moving away from their sort of their their parents and wow. they're moving out to their peer groups and to, and to develop their own identity. So having their giving them some guidance on that not telling them who they need to be obviously but like saying hey if you can be really clear on like what's important to you then that's really going to help you uh, make decisions and you know that and it's a part of time of life where you will be making decisions like what do you want to do in your life after school and you know who do you want to hang out with and what's important to you how do you want to spend your time that you've got so it's all a critical time for people to be really clear. So like if I'm, I'm just showing up on the screen, um, the journal, the, the first three parts of it are really about like knowing yourself. So just basically selling that idea, hey, it's important you know who you are and who you wanna be and then who you're not. And mm -hmm. that's what, why I talk about the masks that we wear mm -hmm. um, and uncovering those because it's big for teenagers that they sort of put on a mask and pretend to be somebody else. And often that's not healthy at all. And, um, you know, probably shouldn't maybe thinking that word performance isn't important, but, um, 
they are because they're really personal values um, and they cross over into your performance. So the, the third part of this is, which is part of this journal is like getting some clarity there. There's examples like what sort of things, uh, values that they would um, like to have for themselves. And they would, you know, on this page here, like write them all down. They can use pictures, do what they want. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really, a, I talk about this because there's one part that people get wrong a little bit and they talk about who they are as a person, which is okay. Mm -hmm. so a little bit on that, but we can also, also get stuck with that and, and be like, well, this is who I am and sort of resign to that fact rather than talking about values as a way that you want to be, which is more of a present thing that you can get in touch with at any moment. Um, and so the if it's a good value it's something that you can connect with right now um in the moment that you're in and you can go and be that thing rather than um i guess uh a bit something like a goal that you are, you're aiming to be in the future or get and get in the future rather than yeah mm. so the being rather than the getting i guess is a key mm -hmm. part of the value stuff well, that's, so, that yeah. sounds really grounding too especially in that you know very a uh, fast developmental age in life where, you know, so many things feel out of a teenager's control. And it sounds like what you're doing here is you're allowing them to um, develop and cultivate the awareness around what's in their control. But also, you know, as you mentioned masks, you know, it, it's often the sense that, you know, we, we're trying to fit in, um, you know, the social world is, is so important at that age. And, um, you know, normalizing it in a way that, you know, for all of us, we're, we're trying to kind of figure out, you know, where we fit and which roles we play. Is it also true within here, though, that, as you're saying all this, um, that we play, that we play several roles? Um, you know, I think one thing that, that feels uh, really important to me when I work with teenage athletes is, is really kind of breaking apart their sport self from their whole self do you have is that kind of the essence of of the masks and 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 some of the the values-based stuff that you have in here yeah i think that's a massive um part of it and that we we're not gonna i i and that's probably why i've used that word performance values because it's kind of like ones that you can live out on that on that sports field and and be in that moment whereas like if someone says hey I, you know my family's really important to me and that's a really important value and that's awesome but you know if you're playing sport that might be less of a value that you can connect with unless you've got family in, involved in that and right in that in the middle of that game so um and yeah like being we need to be um we have different parts of ourselves that we bring to the table in different contexts, which is important. But then being aware that, hey, that there's also parts that we, we might hide because of the fear of people finding out something about ourselves, which is actually often something that will hold us back rather than keep us mm. or, or um, help us in the end. So, so in this era, though, um, of everything being digital, why why are you so uh, kind of stubborn about the idea that this should be something that's in their hands with a pen or pencil and not just something they can click through? Um, what's the what's the main points for why that's so beneficial? Well, I remember um, it wasn't that long ago I was doing a, a few some cognitive psychology papers at university and them saying you know there is clear evidence that if you write things down it sticks a lot better than if you type it um and or tap it with your thumbs <laughs> so the 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 power of a pen and paper um is real and and we're moving away from that and we're going everyone wants to come up with the latest app and the and and there's a place for that stuff. You know, it's not like I don't use apps and things like that myself and, and we all do and all teenagers will, but how about like sometimes just stepping away from those? And that's what I kind of the vision with this journal was, is that we can chuck our phones in the, in a box and lock them up and just reflect um, without the influence of powerful media that's 
designed to distract us. Mm. Um, writing down a goal is a lot easier than a lot, a lot more effective than typing down a goal. Um, and the mechanism behind that, I wouldn't know, but it, it just <laughs> seems to be the way that um, when something's written with paper, it's almost more of a commitment to yourself, I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of that, like in journaling, you know, you can type stuff if you have to, but um, mm -hmm. we go to our, uh, the if I just switch to like the daily journal part of this, yeah. Um, where you're, and if you look, that's it's a little bit out of, out of order there. Um, that the reflection on the left hand side, like what went well, what did you learn, all that sort of stuff, is just a whole lot better if you're not um, typing it. You're sitting and you're giving yourself time to think. So. Mm -hmm. And I, what I really appreciate about this, you know, as somebody that really encourages my athletes to journal is that it can be really overwhelming to stare at a blank page. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so what, what's really nice about this is that you're, you're prompting, you're sort of creating the conditions for them to get into some deeper thought so that they don't, um, you, you kind of mitigate that overwhelm like just giving this very simple, uh, and I love the, you know, the way that you've constructed the shapes on here um, to really kind of, you know, encourage people, them, the people who, who are doing the journal to, to distill things down into these boxes. And, you know, I think that often we think of constraints as a negative thing. Um, but I think, you know, the combination of this, you know, pen and paper type journal with these boxes and, and a limited amount of space to, to record, I think really does encourage and, and, um, and guide and prompt student athletes to sit and think before they actually start writing. Yeah. The limited amount of space and, but the, but the prompt is really crystal clear. So I just think that's a, such a, potent combination for somebody to be able to sift through a lot of the noise and and kind of get to the essence of you know what did go well today you know yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and that like and that's what i kind of wanted to have like well let's give them something so they don't just sit there and go i don't know what to journal about so there's you know like some important stuff like like i what i always ask parents uh or tell parents before you know a big game instead of saying like how well they're going to do you know, or talking about the result talk about how, how to the to your child about how they're going to be you know like what are they going to bring to the table today are they going to bring persistence determination you know all that sort of stuff that we can control rather than you're going to win today you know like it's uh, uh, a lot more controllable and and um effectively you're probably more likely to win if you're focusing on things that you can control like how you're going to be um rather than you know what you're going to achieve outcome wise so yeah there's that that value stuff you see in the in the middle there critical and then i thought some space there to write whatever but obviously again like let's give them some ideas so it's like people can use it like a diary write their schedule write down some goals write down some mental training activities which is kind of all the last part of this this journal future struggles that they're going through and you know like typical journaling how you're feeling what's going on mm -hmm. um and then the reflections kind of like um you know classic questions what went well what did you learn about mm -hmm. cool what are you going to do now that you've um you've written those things down but how are we going to turn those into actions like what's going to be the learnings from that and then you know how are we going to actually take those and apply them <laughs> so right. Um, and then like this sort of giving yourself a number about these controllables. So mm. like how courageous you were, you know, how, how brave were you today out of 10? How well did you live as the person that you wanted to be like value wise out of 10? So mm. you give you those quantitative, I mean, they're still subjective, but like they can help because you can look back and go, man, like for the last three weeks, I've been like a zero for courage or one every day. So I, I need to step it up. Yeah. Um, that's the intention there. Yeah. Yeah. It's great data collection for sure. What, um, you know, how, how many pages are in this journal? How long would, would a, a student athlete um, be able to continue to use this journal and as a, a living document? 
So you're looking at um, probably a season is what I've designed it for. Mm-hmm. If they were doing it every training and every um, practice, they were or every day even. Mm-hmm. So you've got um, like if I show you, we've got these are all sorts of mind training exercises, mindfulness based stuff, um, which is a key part of ACT and um, put in a little bit of visualization there, imagery. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, and obviously I'm clicking through these mm-hmm. sort of mindfulness, different mindfulness exercises um, that will go through. And then that's, these finish. Um, so that all that content, there's a lot of that, which I haven't shown, but that would finish, that finishes at about page 55. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of the book's just your daily journal and there's 170. So there's about 120 pages, um, mm-hmm. which would be 60 days of, of journal and reflection, which is um, mm-hmm. the intention was to, to have that last a season um, mm-hmm. for, a, for a very sort of disciplined user. Um, but also it's undated. So mm-hmm. you write your own date down, you pick it up, you know, and maybe you're going through a, a tougher time. It could be that resource that you you jump on. So I didn't want it to be like, you know, when someone buys a diary and at the start of the year and, and right. they don't use it, and it's like I can't use it now because all the dates have changed. It's hopefully yeah. it's usable um, as and when people want to use it. Right. Yeah. And I really like how that, you know, in a sense, it's it's timeless because you've front loaded it with all the, the skills, you know, through the centering exercises and the mindfulness exercises and the box breathing and, and all those sorts of things that, that really, you know, front load and lay the foundation, you know, it's almost like, you, you know, get, getting a journal like this before the season where you're learning those things and then you can kind of put them into practice. So much value in, you know, being able to reframe the game in a sense. And as you're saying, you know, like, I, I think of it as like, we all have to do lists, but this seems like in the way you're framing it is what's your to be list. Yeah. And, right. Um, and, and also you, you know, having a, more of a, a toolbox full of skills before even the season starts and, and a reference that you can bring with you all, all the time. Yeah. It's pretty awesome, mate. I like it. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good one. I might steal that. To be <laughs> so how uh, how does one get a hold of this? You know, when when, when this gets posted on my site, we'll, I'll definitely put a link. Um, yep. I know you're you're shipping them from New Zealand, so um, yeah, at the moment. So right. it's it's available online at the store. I mean, it is available internationally. Um, prices currently from New Zealand, understandably, it's probably going to be a bit to, but like bulk orders, um, definitely, you know, like a lot cheaper um, to, to, to send those internationally. And then what's in the pipeline is uh, a harder cover. So if you'll see this one, it's a currently a, a soft cover, um, um, which is, you know, it's fine. It's a great mm-hmm. start mm-hmm. for people, but the harder cover will be, um, more durable if it's in mm-hmm. the sports bag it's gonna you know be a lot um safer and um mm-hmm. that will uh when that comes out that will be um shipped from the us is the intention um mm-hmm. yeah, australia and new zealand so excellent yeah. and i could see this working really well with teams as well mm, that's uh that's a big i, I guess what i really want to see is coaches pulling this up um and going right training's done pull out your journals um and let's reflect and and going you know going around and talking to them what have they got there um asking if they could if they're happy with the athlete to share some stuff with them about what they've thought about what they've reflected on and all that so um i know we get a coach a lot of coaches getting their hands on it and 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 then getting the team to to get a copy each so that's one of my one of my hopes i guess is that that happens a lot yeah awesome zane this is amazing work um it's so needed now for those in youth sport at whatever level that they're at i mean these are just foundational skills that um 
you know, and whether you're just getting into sport competitively or whether you're playing at the top of the, of the, the, the sport, um, you know, qualification chain, um, mm. you know, these are things that, that the pro athletes are, have mastered and, you know, and really need to be in, in place before that ascension really kind of takes off. So great work. I love it. And, you know, anything that I can do to help promote this and get this out to teams, I'll certainly do that. But thanks for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Awesome. No problem. Thanks for having me. All right.